Hello everyone, happy December 20th. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I actually washed my hair today for the first time in a few days <laughs> because um, I was so embarrassed about being in my bathrobe uh, on yesterday's video. Although uh, I don't want to completely rule out the idea that that might not happen in the future because it probably will, um, especially as Christmas nears nears us. Um, okay, so let's just get started on the chocolate advent calendar part. There we go. Let's look for number 20. It's getting easier to spot them. Okay, so we've got a little thing here, like foil covered oval. Looks like milk chocolate. Hopefully it has caramel in it. Um, so on to today's story, number 20. It's called The Game of Smash and Recovery by Kelly Link. And based on Laura's video that I watched this morning and the bio in the back, I gather that Kelly Link is a fairly well-known short story writer who specializes in science fiction and horror and fantasy, that sort of thing. Um, I had never heard of her, although that is not surprising at this point. <laughs> um, you know, I've kind of discovered that throughout this advent calendar journey that there's uh, a whole lot of people that I know nothing about that I really should know more about. I mean, I don't generally know a lot of science fiction authors in general, but um, I'm kind of embarrassed that I know so little. <laughs> about so many things. Um, so I have a lot of homework to do, but that's actually a good thing because the more writers there are, the more books there are to read. So that actually gets me excited. It doesn't depress me. Um, so anyways, back to the book or back to the story. Um, it's about a brother and sister, Annette and Oscar, and they live in outer space on what I can only assume is a different planet than Earth. Um, and there's some little creatures around them. Oh, here comes Smokey. There's some little creatures around them. Um, some of them are called Handmaids, like as in like The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. <laughs> At least that's what I was thinking of, but they're not human. And then um, vampires and Handmaids are kind of more positive than the vampires, although they both, both of these kind of creatures seem to have their own agendas. Um, honestly, this story is really hard for me to describe because I didn't really understand what was going on. <laughs> That's not clear already. Um, you know, and because I didn't understand what was going on like throughout the whole thing, I just kind of gave up. Like I, I read through to the end and you know, at the end there's kind of this big revelation. And I mean, I'm almost embarrassed to say what I think the revelation was because it's probably not even right. It's, it seemed like um, Annette is actually like, uh, like an artificial intelligence being of some sort. Um, it, Cause she finds like a, like a rocket ship it's kind of like half, half buried. And it turns out like Oscar isn't her brother, but like uh, was sent to just keep her there on this planet. I, I don't really know. That's, it's, I, I probably didn't even read it correctly. And honestly, I, as I was reading, I thought, gosh, I'm sure if I went back and read this a second time, I would probably pick up more, but I just, I just, I don't like science fiction to start with. And another problem that I had with this was that there weren't a lot of like concrete descriptions. So I couldn't picture anything really in my mind. And so I kind of felt like I was just floundering to kind of latch on to particular sentences that would make sense to me because this world that the characters are in are so unlike, is so unlike our own that I just couldn't, I just didn't feel grounded at, at any point in the story. So it's, it was hard for me to even interpret what I was reading, I guess. Um, and this is really, this is really demonstrating to me how lazy of a reader I am because 
I mean, I probably could try to figure it out, but I just don't want to. I just don't, I'm just not gonna bother. I'm just gonna, you know, say this story is way above my head and that's, that's where it's gonna stay. Um, but luckily I washed my hair, as I mentioned today, so the, the view from above won't be as greasy as it usually is. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's what I got out of this story, which just was not very much. And, you know, I don't doubt that a lot of people are gonna love this story. Probably fans of Link are gonna be like, ah, oh, another, another great masterpiece. Um, I'm just not the intended audience for a story like this. And that's okay. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the other bloggers have to say about it. And I was a bit disappointed that this wasn't like a Christmassy story either because yesterday's story was Christmassy. So I thought, oh, from now on, from now until the 25th, all the stories are gonna be some sort of, you know, they're gonna have some sort of holiday theme. There's no holiday theme to be found in this story. And believe me, I, I kept expecting it up until the last paragraph. I thought maybe there's gonna be some sort of mention of Santa Claus or something. Maybe a menorah. Uh, there's nothing like that in this story. So the editor has tricked me into thinking that all the rest of the stories are gonna be holiday themed when they're not. Um, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. It was just a surprise. So there you have it there. Uh, those are my thoughts on today's story, December 20th. And uh, we'll see what uh, the 21st story brings to us. We could be on Earth. We could be on another planet. Who knows? It's just, it's just part of the fun. Right, Smokey? Right. Talk to you tomorrow.